Oh, how's it going, everybody? Josh Ki6NAZ. I'm just playing a little Steam Deck, a interactive portable gaming device. Yeah, Kojima just dropped a new game. It's called uh, Adam K6RK Summits on the Air Simulator. It's it's, it's a banger. Now, before I lose you and you go running off, uh, this is a Linux device. It runs Arch Linux, which means you can do things like this. We got a KQ4CWK. Right on. Very cool. Let's see if we can make a contact. So for a lot of ham radio operators, this may not be the thing for you. Obviously, this is a game device first and foremost. Plus, it's not exactly the cheapest thing to get into. The starting price for this is $399 for the 64 gigabyte model. That jumps up to, yeah, I, I had to look this up because otherwise I wouldn't remember. Uh, the, the 256 gig model is $529 and then the 512 gigabyte model is 649. There isn't a ton of difference between those models except memory size. If you jump all the way up to the 512 model, you get a matte screen and a slightly different case. But if you're considering this for ham radio, which again, I'm kind of making this as kind of a lark, a fun thing out of more than anything, then um, you probably don't need to go that high. Now I'll take a bit of a tangent here to talk about Linux. There used to be a time a couple of years ago when we used to just hop on Amazon and buy Raspberry Pi 4s for very inexpensive, and now they've doubled in price, sometimes quadrupled in price. $120 is what people are paying right now for a Raspberry Pi 4, which is just insane. If you have a desire to get into Linux, I highly would recommend you look at something called Thin Clients, and I'll link to two pages, uh, one that is at Andreas Spees, the YouTube channel. We've talked about him when we were playing around with Laura devices and Hackaday for their great little article on how to use thin clients. We're just like kind of dummy computers or very low powered computers that were used for simple tasks. But for Linux, you, the lighter port of Linux work really well. And lastly, I'll give a shout out with uh, no information behind it. I've not used this device, but the Innovato is a $30 to like $40 replacement for Raspberry Pi. It's also leaning heavily towards the education side of house, like for learning how to program and that kind of thing. So I can't comment on its ability to be good or not with ham radio devices. A couple of things we got to do before we get into this. I'm using a 705 via the cable. And so that means you got to go from USB micro to USB A and you can use an adapter. If you've got a USB C to USB micro that you know is good, with the 705, then you can use that. I have a good cable here, so I'd rather just use a little adapter at the end. Uh, links will be in the description if you're interested on these to make this connect to the Steam Deck. Also, this is just easier for me. This is a Logitech, I call this a sofa keyboard, and I spilled some wax on there some time ago. It has the mouse and keyboard and a simple keyboard. It works just fine for the Steam Deck. This is the Illuminated Living Room Keyboard K830. Good luck finding them. They're kind of hard to find and I've beat this one up pretty bad, but it works okay. You don't have to use a keyboard, but it helps. To get this all started, you click on Steam, the button here, go to Power, and switch to Desktop. And it'll bring you over to the Desktop mode. So now in Desktop mode, we're literally using the mouse right here. It's gonna follow me around. I already have WSJTX loaded and that's all there is to it. You just need to connect the radio to this and I'll show you my settings for use. I will make a passing mention that docking stations can be really nice to use with this device. This is the Steam docking station which has a display port connection, a HDMI connection, USB-C for power, LAN connection and three USB ports and this connects on the top of the Steam Deck. This is what I use in the office, and I can use my network in that case to wirelessly connect to devices if I want to do that. All right, so first thing to do here is connect your Steam Deck to your 705. This is running in 10 meters right now, but USB-D mode, which is what we want. You saw a couple little things pop on the screen there. In fact, it's still doing it. This is a little bit of a funky setup, I'll tell you that much right now. In fact, I'm gonna use this to prop this guy up for you. There you go. I'm gonna use the mouse over here to bring up WSJTX. 
pretty fast. All right, so after plugging it in, you can see USB-C is enabled right there. And if you're looking at the WSJTX screen, this is a close up on the settings. The only thing you're gonna have to play around with is the port selection. Now, I do have my 705 set up as a 7300. The reason for that is I found that it was a bit easier to set up on Linux on this device. Normally, I don't do that. I tried it both ways. This seemed to be the easiest one. The thing you have to keep in mind here is your drop down for the USB. If you don't know how to do this, you can do a query of the connected USB ports. In my case, the 705 is connected to dev TTY ACM2. All right, those are the settings there. So data bits is eight, stop bits is one, handshake is default. You wanna make sure you're in the data mode. And I have a split set to none right now. I will play around with that and we'll test it with either rig or fake it. But for right now, we're gonna go with none. The Steam Deck does have touch pads on the side, so you can actually use this as a mouse as well. Here's my audio device. This one is a little bit more tricky, and audio in Linux I've always found to be somewhat problematic, so make sure you get a good look at this one. So this is the ALSA input USB Burr Brown from TI USB Audio Codec 00 Analog Dash Stereo. And you're gonna select them both for input and output, and the upper input is gonna be mono, output is both. That should get you what you want to see. And if I click OK here, there's lots of activity on the radio. Let's see if we see anything on the waterfall. Hey, we're decoding. All right, so we're on 40 meters. We are getting some audio. We're seeing decoded characters. I will be the first to admit that the screen is not the widest. We can adjust the resolution a bit, but and you're gonna lose kind of clarity in what you're looking at. So if you wanna skew the start and stop of this, uh, of this waterfall, you can do that. So for instance, let's start this at 200 hertz, 300 hertz, there you go. So now we see a bit more activity and yeah, we're, we're definitely seeing FT8 things. Let's go back over here. No way, W4IPC is out here. This has the exact same functions that you'd expect to see on WSJTX. You've got the slider here for controlling your ALC. I just have it in dark mode, and I am paying attention to my radio as far as SWR and whatnot, but so far, uh, everything's going okay. <laughs> this would be hilarious if I can get Connor on this on video. That would be funny. Only putting out five watts, though, so maybe I should connect up. Maybe I should go for the full power of the 705. Well, it doesn't seem like it's in the cards for Connor here, so let's uh, let's switch things up and see if we can find somebody calling CQ. Give them a shot. There's a Voda station. All right, we got a KQ4CWK. Right on. Very cool. Let's see if we can make a contact. Don't you die on me! Don't you die on me! You get back here. Let's complete this contact. <laughs> there we go, we got it. Yes, yes. I hope you found this video useful. If you end up actually buying one of these, hopefully this helps, leave a comment below. And if you're somebody that still has a Raspberry Pi or maybe you picked one up cheap and you'd like to know how to set it up for ham radio use, I've got a couple of videos for you to check out right over here in the cards. Thanks so much for watching. I'm Josh, KI6NAZ. Take it easy.